So I actually had to go back and remove one and two from what I recorded yesterday because, as my wife says, I was a little bit spicy. I wasn't being very nice in that video. Probably am not all that nice on three through ten, but I was really disappointed in the performance on the quiz. That's what it comes from. Anyways, that little meme is appropriate. This is a class you have to study in to get a B or C. A lot. Just get used to that. If you see me next year, it's the same way. All right. So, anyways, let's go back and do one and two. Find the average rate of change for f of x is negative x squared minus 3x plus 4 over the interval negative 3 to 1. I'm going to go ahead and take a half a second of my life and label that a and b. The formula is f of b minus f of a. Those are f's, believe it or not, over b minus a. Now, some of you guys watch videos muted. You don't need to be doing that. So... Off the side, I need to figure out what these two pieces are. You find f of b by plugging in a 1. I can do that one in my head. That should be 0. You find f of a by plugging in a negative 3. Notice how I'm writing it. That's kind of important. Uh, you're more than welcome to use a calculator. Type that in just as it's written. But anyways, that would become a negative 9. Negative 3 squared is positive 9, but the negative symbol out front makes it negative. This becomes a positive 9 and then plus 4. So we're left with 4 because those two cancel out. So plugging back into f of b minus f of a, I know that f of b is 0. I'm going to take away f of a, which was 4. I'm going to be sitting over b minus a, 1 take away a negative 3. This becomes negative 4 over 4, which is negative 1. <laughs> a lot of kids answered a to that one. I'm not really sure. I think they just plugged in f of b and they saw a 0 and they were happy with it. There's a little bit more to it than that. Jill is 8 years younger than Jack. Now, this is the one that aggravated me. It aggravated me because almost every single kid who missed this question picked A. What kind of hooked on phonics reading were you taught? Jill is eight years younger than Jack. Why would you add eight years to Jack? Why would you do such a thing? That makes no sense. You would not add eight years to Jack. You would take away eight years from Jack. Should have chose C. Now the other one I get is hard. In seven years. Well, if seven years happen, Jill ages seven and Jack ages seven. All right? It says Jack will be twice as old as Jill. That means that Jill is half Jack's age. If anything, she is half of Jack's age. Now, how do we fix the halving? We double this side. And if we double that side, we double the other side. Two times Jill plus seven is a single jack plus seven. You needed equation C and equations D. How old is Jack? Well, everywhere that I see Jill, I can replace her with jack minus eight. It's called the substitution property. I can do that. So twice a jack minus an eight, add seven, because I'm just copying stuff down, kids must equal a single jack plus seven. If you want, clean up the parentheses. A negative eight plus a seven is a negative one. Every one of you has heard of the distributive property. I don't care if there's a, num a name in there or not. It's still the distributive property. Twice a jack, take away a two, is equal to a jack plus a seven. Add two. Twice a jack is equal to a jack plus a nine. And now you're going to subtract jack from nine. So two jack, take away a jack, is nine. 
and two jacks take away another jack has to be Jack. Jack is nine years old. Anyways, there's one and two. Come back and do the rest of it here in just a moment. 